I've actually always been a little wary of making an outline. Uh, I know a lot of writers do that, and it would probably help me stay on track. But for me, an outline is something that I do when I'm writing an essay or writing a speech. And yeah. I kind of like to keep my story writing very organic. Yeah. Um, usually I have in my head. I might write down, it ends this way, so I don't forget it. But aside from that, uh, it's really, I just go ahead and write. Um, kind of a blank page and you just kind of go and yeah a I try to I have to have an idea at first though and that's something that because I um, a while back I was like I'm gonna write a short story every single day but I found that I would be staring at a page for yeah. like 10 minutes yeah. I come up with an idea that wasn't that great and so I'm just letting the ideas come writing them down and mm. uh, when I have time I try to take them up okay. right so when you launched your career, um, you published your, your first books, you started being around more adults and you started speaking and everything. Is there anything that you were surprised by when you were, you were around more adults? Um, not really. Actually, one of the cool things is that my parents, they always, they never sent us off to like the kids' table or something yeah. when we were having dinner with uh, adults or relatives and stuff. Um, so I grew up, you know, knowing how to converse with adults to some extent, yeah. I think. And so it wasn't a super big adjustment. I think that as a society, we do a lot of segregating. Okay, here's the kids' table, yeah. here's this age group, that age group, and you don't really mix. But uh, I feel really lucky in that I was able to from a young age. Okay. Yeah, cool. Um, so tell me more about TEDx. Last year was your first year involved with with a, a TED program, right? So, uh, oh, so sorry. You, no, no, go ahead. You organized it? Is that, is that what happened? So what happened was I first spoke at the, um, so TED has their main TED event in Long mm -hmm. Beach, and so I spoke there, and I just went away super inspired. I was like, well, How I, old were you when you first spoke? Um, 12. That was like, okay, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, 2010 February um, and I was like how can I bring this kind of in a way back home and of course they have this uh, kind of um, not a franchise but their TEDx yeah. mm -hmm. program is all these independently organized ones so I yeah. thought I'm gonna have one but I'm always mad where I go to education conferences or even a conference like TED and I'm the only kid there except for Paul Simon's kids yeah. <laughs> and that's sort of a weird feeling you know that um, and so I, I was like, well, I need to start a conference where kids aren't going to feel kind of alone. Mm -hmm. So I took the extreme step of saying all kids in the audience, all kids speaking, and all kids organizing. Uh, and um, obviously we let their parents uh, also come along, but most of them were in the breakout room watching the stream yeah. instead. So really making kids our target audience and having high quality speakers. This year we're doing it again. We've moderated a little bit. We're letting parents and civic leaders come in, but our major audience, uh, I think like 65% of it will still be kids. Okay. So how's this experience been um, this year? Uh, your mom was saying that you have to work more with finding sponsorships and stuff. How have yes. you found that experience? Oh, uh, I feel kind of like a, a cross between a stalker, a private detective, and a telemarketer because the amount of looking, and I have to do really Weasley searches. I can't just <laughs> look up, um, you know, McGraw-Hill contact. I have to look up McGraw-Hill corporate responsibility or yeah. Aeropostale press room in order to get all these people's emails mm -hmm. and phone numbers. So that's where I feel a little bit sneaky, but I... Um, I, to some extent, I've been a little bit discouraged by the fact that there's so many people who are not really willing to hear about TEDx Redmond, and don't, aren't interested in a youth event because it doesn't address their, maybe their target audience or they don't feel there would be benefit. Um, but I, so far, we've, uh, I, I've also been encouraged by the number of parents yeah. and students who have already signed up to come and that's what really motivates me. Okay. Who's, uh, as far as corporate sponsorships, do you have some in line already? Because it's in September, right? Yeah, it is in September, so we're really pushing. Um, we're trying, well, we've been reaching out to, uh, unfortunately, Bing was our sponsorship last year, Microsoft, mm -hmm. uh, and we're trying to get them to do it again this year, but they say that they've already budgeted out. Mm -hmm. uh, so, possible, but not very likely. Uh, Dell, possible, not very likely. Um, K-12 is an education company. Uh, they're they're likely going to give us some small funding, okay. uh, but we have yet to find the big top tier sponsor. Okay. If I, can, if I know anybody that can help, um, we can get some stuff on our blog because we have a lot of obviously big time, you know, tech people and yeah. other people, you know, in the coverage area that we that we service. So you never know if we get the word out. Um, yeah, definitely. Let's see. So what will be different this year um, at TED? Different this year. Um, better organized, I think, because last year we had all these tweets coming in after the conference. We're like, awesome conference, but I'm starving. <laughs> so this year we're going to have uh, more breaks, more 
food again um we're talking with pcc and hopefully that okay. catering comes through but um so we're going to have it a little tighter keep the speakers really on the time and we're also uh starting because we don't have an attendee issue this year because we had 750 people sign up last year we just reach out to that network when we don't have to you know promote ourselves yeah. for attendees so much okay can people, I mean, can people still buy tickets or, you know, despite that, that um, base that you already have, or you, would you expect more people to come if, if, you know, because I'd want to mention this in the magazine and if you get more people, would that be a problem or is, do you have the No, not at all. We definitely want more people. Yeah. The more people we have is great because uh, not if, for instance, we have like hundreds of seats and if even the seats in the main theater run out, yeah, then the, yeah. there'll be the stream. So it, more people know about TEDx Run at the Bell. Okay. Very cool. Um, do you have an accomplishment so far that you're most proud of? Well, speaking of TED was a definite one just because it's such a high profile uh, area and a conference, um, and what an audience too, but uh, I also, I have kind of weirder accomplishments, you know, that are more it's academic, fine. like writing a 12 page essay on the Canterbury Tales, which I was actually Tales. like five That's pages my... longer than the requirements. <laughs> That's my, probably my favorite classic is Canterbury Tales. Really? Yep. Okay. I really enjoyed it. Um, I keep a copy on my shelf and thumb through it at least once a year. So that's, that's a fun cool. one. Twelve pages. Yeah, okay. which is I'm sure much shorter than <laughs> uh, it would be if I had to write like a college paper. But I still felt pretty proud. Um, yeah, I would say uh, speaking at TED, writing that essay, and <laughs> that sounds kind of. Did you write it for yourself, or was that something you did for an actual class? It was for an assignment in yeah. my language arts class. Um, but it was, in a way, it was for myself a little bit because my language arts teacher happens to give me 100% on a lot of things. Yeah. So it, the fact that I went, I, I kind of did so much research and yeah. wrote so much was that part was, was more Yeah, that part was more for you. Okay. Um, so I have an interesting request here. I want you to maybe give us some advice for three different age groups. So give, give a word of advice to a five-year-old, a word of advice to a teenager, and then a word of advice to a parent. Okay, that is, uh, I'm sure I start with first, a uh, five-year-old. Okay, um, don't be uh, worried about your ideas sounding too childish because really a lot of our great ideas come from people who aren't afraid to uh, say things that sound crazy. So keep it coming with the flying unicorns and ice cream eating dragons because uh, you never know, you might also come up with a cure for cancer. <laughs> and if not, we'll still have great stories to read. So don't be uh, curbing your creativity because someone says it's childish. Okay. How about for a teenager? For a teenager, uh, stop wearing hoodies. No. <laughs> I like it. Uh, <laughs> I'm putting that down anyway, okay, but okay. you can give another one. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm not going to bore you with my fashion advice for my sister, <laughs> but uh, I would say um, don't feel pressured to, I think, uh, and this probably is a little bit cliche, but don't feel pressured to not be smart, um, or it's okay to be smart, even in school where you're a smarty pants or you're, you know, it's something weird and different, um, talk about news with your friends. Ask people, do you know what's going on in Libya? Because only when one person starts and two people start, three people start, then we finally get this kind of youth culture that actually cares about what's going on in the world. Very cool. How about for um, a parent? Uh, I would say, um, well, one of the great things is that my parents didn't spend a whole lot of money on fancy clothes, but they bought us a lot of books and they bought us mu uh, musical instruments and they had us watch public television <laughs> instead of Cartoon Network. And so really treating us like adults and... Uh, subscribing to magazines? Subscribing to magazines. Oh yeah, definitely. We had so <laughs> many magazines. Actually, we still have a lot of magazines. Um, so um, treat us like adults in the sense that we can reason and we do... Uh, have brains, and <laughs> I think most parents realize that. And but, better ones. But, um, yeah, allow us to be talking with with adults as well as kids our own age, okay. because we can learn from those who are younger and older than us. Very cool. Okay, good. Um, let's see, what was I going to ask next? So, you're described by a lot of people, even on your website, as being a you know successful author, successful speaker, successful curator of events. How do you... Um, how do you see, or how do you, how do you define success for yourself? Uh, you know, that's sort of the funny thing, though, is that with successful, 
I don't know, I haven't sold like millions of copies of books, right. so I'm not really sure what the bar for success is, and I don't really want to set one because I think success is what makes you feel fulfilled. Mm -hmm. And uh, if success means, I don't know, working uh, do, uh, car washing cars, then that could be success. You know, if, if it's really your idea of what fulfills you, what uh, puts you in the best position to help others uh, and help yourself. And it sounds like you're not quite ready to be fulfilled yet, obviously. You've got, you know, a lot more to accomplish. I don't think I'm going to retire anytime <laughs> soon. Right. Um, much as I would love to, you know, just hang out and on, like, castles or something, but <laughs> uh, I, I don't have nearly enough of a fortune to do that. So um, not that not that making money is my goal, yeah. but obviously I still want to go to college. I want to uh, have a career that extends beyond just, uh, oh, she's a child prodigy or look how young she is. Mm -hmm. You know, it should be right. saying long lasting. Yeah, I mean, as I'd imagine that that's not something that you want to be known for. It's more about no. the work that you do. Yeah, right? definitely. Because if you look at... Uh, because the thing with being, oh, she's the seven-year-old teacher or the ten-year-old <laughs> teacher is that, well, I'm going to be the 25-year-old teacher. Yeah. And so I have to keep on reinventing and doing things that uh, make me stand out. I wouldn't say make me stand out um, because I don't really care about being famous, but just uh, that continue to help the world. Okay, cool. So what would you tell someone that wanted to make similar changes that, you know, that you're working towards? What kind of, uh, what would you tell somebody that might be interested in doing more? Uh, definitely find out, uh, I would say you really want to start, if you uh, are interested in helping the world, start local because for me it really started with the idea that I didn't realize there were kids who didn't like to read and write and yeah. so I said I'm going to change that and of course being an obstinate six year old I went to a local school, I gave my presentation mm -hmm. and it really sparked from there, from something very local. I want to get the kids uh, in Redmond to like reading and writing too. I want to get all kids like reading and writing and then of course I realized there are kids who don't have books and there are kids who don't have food and so that's how I got involved with the World Food Program um, and uh, doing my charitable works and so uh, there it's kind of cliche but this whole idea of uh, starting local and really expanding your reach uh, worked for me. So aside from uh, Toronto and, and um, TEDx this year, uh, what's next for you as far as your travels go and, and speaking engagements? Do you have more lined up after that? I think there's uh, this, what is that called? The thing in Las Vegas, when is that? Oh, there's the Also Festival in September. Oh, that's and right. The International Rotary Club. Yes, okay, so I'm going to uh, Monterey, California okay. for this uh, literary festival, which I'm really looking forward to, and I think that Justice Sandra Day O'Connor will be there, oh. which is pretty awesome. And um, after that, I'm going to speak, I think, for the International Rotary Club, um, some uh, gathering in uh, also near Monterey. And then after that, I head to Las Vegas, uh, and I get to um, party. No, I'm actually giving a speech to a conference for teachers, the mm -hmm. ASCD. What the ASD stands for? ASCD. Uh, Association? For uh, s curriculum development, maybe? Curriculum development? I don't know. Have yeah. to look. ASCD? Yes. I bet it's school curriculum development. Well. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Cool. So as far as school goes, I, you know, you're... Um, have homeschooled right now, right? And and you do some stuff online, right? Well, what ha it's um it's called an online public school, okay. so it's um, sort of an alternative learning experience. It's still uh, like a Washington State funded public school, and I'll get my diploma and everything. And then last semester, I also took two classes at Redmond Junior High, uh, just locally here. So um, I, it's kind of an interesting arrangement. Next year, I'll also probably be doing the same thing at Redmond High School, okay. taking a couple classes locally and also doing online. When are you <clears throat> when are you going to start taking some college classes? Probably um, once the high school ones run out, yeah. <laughs> I um, I would be going because I'm in ninth grade. Even though I'm thirteen, yeah. uh, I'm two years younger than most other ninth graders. Mm -hmm. So I'll be like the sixteen year old twelfth grader, and as yep. a result, I'd be going to college a little early. Understandable. I went through the same thing when I was a kid. They wanted me to move up a year, and I chose not to for some reason. I was like, I just kind of wanted to be around kids that were still my age. Yeah. Um, and I. I don't really regret doing that, but at the same time, I think it would have, you know, advanced things for me. I still did, like, a lot of extracurricular learning and everything, but do you ever feel like um, you you want to be in, in a so, more social situation like that? 
Um, to some extent, to some extent not. There's obviously some perks of not always being in yeah. high school or well, junior high yeah. social scene because um, I'm not kind of... My sister is really into prom and homecoming and dances and all that. Yeah. I'm not that sort of person. Um, and I, I mean, it's nice to talk to other people my own age as well as to adults, but I find that the conversation can be on different things. And yeah not quite so interesting. So um, I like being around kids my own age, but I wouldn't say I would be able to take five days a week, seven okay. hours or six hours or whatever a day. Um, and my traveling really enriches me. Yeah. But um, it's when I went to junior high, I was like, everybody was like, oh, what grade are you in? And thought I was a seventh grader. And I would just be like, oh, I skipped two grades. So it's a lot of explaining. Yeah, explain, yeah. yeah. OK. Um, as far as your travels go, what, what's, has there been something that stood out so far? What's been your favorite place? That you visited? Mm, I have a lot of favorite places. Oh, I loved um, Lugano, Switzerland. We went, well, also Lucerne is good. We went there this year, but Lugano, Switzerland was really beautiful because it was snowing and mm. it was um, it was just like one of those pictures out of the Swiss postcards yeah. because we could see the mountains and um, it was really beautiful. And I was speaking at this American boarding school there. Okay, very cool. Is there a place that is on your list of um, must see, you know, must see travel places? I would really love to go to Scotland. Um, I uh, I really like the idea of going to Edinburgh and seeing castles and the grassy highlands and everything. It sounds like you're really into castles. Yeah, I'm sorry. I mentioned them already a couple no, of times. No, no, that's okay. Probably <laughs> wondering uh, what kind of uh, weirdo I am. But um, yeah, I, I was just really huge on like pirates and kings and queens uh -huh. and royalty in general, when, uh, especially growing up, because my parents sort of indulged that. They bought me all these his history books and yeah. I would always be you know, castles and knights and all that. Neat time period. Okay. Was well, there anything that I didn't ask that um, you wish I would have asked you? I think you covered quite a lot. Um, yeah, very comprehensive. Okay, cool. Well, I'm going to let you go. I, don't, um, I think I have a lot to work with 